<laughs> well, this talk is about uh, rearrangement of hollow PV towers. And Chris just asked me, what's hollow mean? Hollow just means there's no PV in the center. And uh, this is mostly the work of Eric Hendricks. He got his PhD about two years ago. He's presently a postdoc out at NRL in Monterey. And this uh, was motivated by this diagram, which appeared in uh, one of the papers by Yao et al. 2004. It's a series of papers on Hurricane Andrew, modeling Hurricane Andrew with uh, MM5. And they presented this uh, cross-section of potential vorticity. So this is uh, 200 kilometers along here. This is the center of the vortex right here. This goes up to the tropopause. And this is in PV units. So th this is really high PV right here and right here. And then there's this tower of PV that goes up, up like this on each side of the, of the center. But there's also this uh, high PV uh, in this uh, bridge across the eye. So uh, what Eric uh, did was try to see if he could simulate this through an adiabatic mixing process. So the idea is to try to sim simulate this PV bridge, which occurs in the lower levels here. It's, it's around three kilometers or so. And he tried to simulate this with, uh, with a, a primitive equation model. And it's, it's an adiabatic model. So it's not really a hurricane. It's really idealized. Uh, it has three prognostic equations for pressure, vorticity, divergence. Here's the divergence equation. Here's the vorticity equation. And this is the mass continuity equation in isentropic coordinates. It's for the pseudo density in that space. So the pseudo density is the change in pressure over the change in potential temperature. And then th these are the three predictive equations. And then these are the diagnostic equations. So after you predict vorticity and divergence, then they go on the right hand side here. And then you just invert these things to find the stream function and the velocity potential. And then you compute the wind components, U and V, from the stream function and velocity potential. And then you compute the Montgomery potential, which appears here. You compute that from the hydrostatic equation. So three predictive equations, and the rest are diagnostic. The model's discretized like this. It has 19 integer levels. And vorticity and divergence are defined at the integer levels. Pressure is defined at the half integer levels. The horizontal discretization, it's on a 600 kilometer by 600 kilometer doubly periodic domain. It has 384 by 384 equally spaced points. That gives a grid spacing of about one and a half kilometers. And it's a pseudo spectral method, so there's no finite differencing done here. It's all done in uh, uh, spectral. The time discretization is Adams Bashford. It's an explicit scheme. And because this has a lamb wave in it, uh, it goes quite fast. It, it requires a quite small time step, one second. Here's, a, here's one of the two initial conditions that Eric ran in the model. And there's four diagrams here. Uh, this diagram here is the tangential wind as a function of radius. And the vertical coordinate, remember, is theta in Kelvin here. And uh, if you look at the colors there, that's the tangential wind. It's about 30 meter per second wind max there. And then these solid lines here are the absolute angular momentum surfaces. And you can see they're all packed together right here, just inside the radius of maximum wind. That's where the vorticity is really large. This is a cross section of the potential vorticity. And you read it off of this scale here, which is in PV units. So it's very high uh, PV right here. And it's low PV in the center. That's what's meant by hollow. And then this, these are horizontal uh, distributions of PV. This one right here is at 303 Kelvin, which is right about there. And this one is at 333 Kelvin, which is right about there. So that's the initial condition. Here's what it looks like after eight hours. That initial condition is unstable. And uh, so if you look at what's going on at low levels, it's breaking down into a wave number three disturbance. And uh, what's happening up at this higher level, this is, remember, 333 Kelvin up here, 
uh, it hasn't started to break down. It, it does break down up here, but the growth rate is very slow. And then here's the cross section, and you can see the PV is starting to widen out. What happens is that some of the low PV in the eye comes out and it kind of uh, filaments into the high PV uh, ring region here. So the, uh, the eye kind of contracts in an asymmetric fashion. So PV moves towards the center. Here's after 48 hours and it's, uh, it's mixed pretty much into a monopole at the low level and it's just starting to break down actually at the upper level. So the, uh, if you go up here to 333, hardly anything's changed, but it's really mixed strongly down at the, at the low level. Now here is a tangential wind and you can see that those solid lines, which were the absolute angular momentum lines, they were packed all together initially. Now they're kind of spread out and uh, there's more spreading down here than there is up here. So there's uh, some tilt to the angular momentum surfaces. Here's the second experiment that he ran. And this is for a thin PV tower. That first case, the, the PV tower was about 20 kilometers wide. In this case, it's only about 10 kilometers wide. It goes from 30 to 40 kilometers here. So it's a very thin ring. And this one breaks down very rapidly. And after eight hours, it's, uh, or excuse me, after 12 hours, it's, it's essentially mixed here at low levels. And this one actually breaks down into a wave number six pattern. The thinner it is, the higher the uh, azimuthal wave number. And here, here's that one after uh, 48 hours. It's mixed in, into a monopole here at low levels. And you can see the tilt in the angular momentum surfaces here. And, uh, and it produces this kind of a, a PV bridge type structure across here. So uh, these are uh, some eye soundings that were published uh, by uh, Hugh Willoughby, 1998. And uh, th this, this shows this inversion level that forms here in the eye at low levels. And uh, we were wondering if this could actually produce an inversion because if you take PV and you mix it to the center, the, the PV is a product of the vo absolute vorticity and the static stability. So when high PV comes into the core, it, it brings high vorticity there, but it brings in high static stability also. So here are uh, soundings. These are vertical temperature profiles in the eye. And this is the thick hollow tower, the first case he ran. And this is the thin hollow tower, the second case he ran. And the solid curves are the initial ones, that is, before mixing. And the dash curves are the ones after mixing. And if you look at this thin, thin tower here, it warmed up here about 6 degrees uh, Celsius. And uh, it produced a, an isothermal layer there. So the, the PV mixing uh, caused increased stability there. Now, the nice thing about uh, isentropic coordinate model is it, it has this beautiful wave mean flow interaction theory associated with it. And um, the only trick in doing this is you have to consider two types of azimuthal mean. You have to consider an ordinary azimuthal mean, which is defined this way. You just take the field, in this case the tangential wind, which is a function of R, the azimuthal angle, the vertical coordinate theta, and time. And you just integrate it uh, on an isentropic surface around a circle divided by the uh, 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 2 pi, and that is a definition of V-bar. So that's the ordinary azimuthal average. But certain fields uh, need to be mass-weighted uh, in the azimuthal average. So, for example, the radial wind needs to be treated this way. Sigma is the pseudo-density. That's that dpd theta. So you need to multiply u by the pseudo-density before you take the average, and then you divide by uh, the pseudo-density bar, and that gives you this u-hat. That's a mass-weighted uh, radial velocity. And then uh, if you take the, the total radial velocity, divide or subtract the uh, mass-weighted one, you get this u-star, which is the, is the deviation from the mass-weighted azimuthal mean. And 
uh, when you take the angular momentum equation and you go through this operation, this is what you get for the azimuthal mean absolute angular momentum. So that uh, m bar is the is the azimuthal mean absolute angular momentum. Its time change depends on two terms. This is the mean term because it's got a u hat. U hat is the mass weighted azimuthal mean. So this is a this is an azimuthal mean term. And then this is the eddy term. And it depends on multiplying together the u star, which is a deviation, and the potential vorticity star, the deviation of the PV field, and then taking the azimuthal mean of that. So this is the eddy term. Now, uh, the next diagram is, is going to show a diagram of this term and a diagram of this term. So this is called the mean term. And this is called the eddy term. And remember that this, this term right here is radially inward uh, because you're taking the high PV and, and fluxing it towards the core of the storm. So here, here is the mean term. And uh, the PV mixing is going on below, say, 320 Kelvin uh, here. And here, this is negative, dash lines, and up here it's positive. This is negative because the U hat is outward. And this is positive because the U hat is inward. So the PV mixing forces a secondary circulation. It's not really deep. It only goes up to about there. But it's in this sense right here. And it, it opposes the, uh, the eddy flux. Uh, and here is the eddy term. And it's positive here and negative here. And notice that uh, uh, th this is, is about four or five times bigger than this. So the, the mean circulation that's induced tries to oppose, oppose the effect of the eddies, but can't, can't do it. And you essentially end up with the sum of these two being like this. And this is the actual change that's observed in the model. So basically what it is, it's, it's a positive change of absolute angular momentum in here. That is, it's speeding up the tangential flow. And out here, it's negative. It's slowing down the uh, uh, tangential flow. So here are the conclusions. Uh, unstable PV waves, they grow most rapidly at low levels. And this causes a PV bridge across the eye. Uh, the mixing of the high PV in the form of this PV bridge across the eye, it leads not only to high vorticity in the eye, but also to high static stability uh, in the eye, in that bridge region. And you can have eye warming at 850 millibars uh, as much as 6 degrees uh, uh, Kelvin. So weak temperature inversions can be formed by this mixing process. Um, and also, this whole process uh, contributes to an outward slope of the eye wall. So what happens is absolute angular momentum surfaces that are initially vertical, they, they later tilt outward with height because they, they shift in more at low levels. And uh, so this implies that there can be adiabatic mechanisms for the generation of eye wall tilt. OK, this is, you have to keep in mind, this is extremely idealized. This is sort of how a hurricane might behave uh, in the absence of diabetic heating. And uh, I might go back to this, this original one. This was all motivated by this. And this, again, this happens in a full physics model. But the idea is that. Things like this can happen due to uh, dry adiabatic inviscid dynamics. Thanks.